Were you on the one where they did the? Um, it was the World War II mock-up. Uh, what was it called? Warbirds. Warbirds. No, but my wife was. I was an EP on Warbirds. Oh, did you do Warbirds? I did Warbirds. That's funny. That yeah. was my. That was my wife's first first movie. She won't let me watch it. I'm gonna watch it though. There, there's reasons. <laughs> Hey, I'm Armando LaDuke, producer, film actor, and owner of LaDuke Entertainment. I have chosen a life off the beaten path and wanted to find others that are doing the same. Spaghetti on the Wall is a show based on all of the years that I've thrown spaghetti on the wall and nurtured what's stuck. We will share fun stories, ideas, tips, tricks, and more. Welcome to Spaghetti on the Wall. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on when you're consuming this podcast. Spaghetti on the Wall... What's up, Patrick Michelson? How are you? Doing great, man. Glad to be here, dude. Uh, you know, you know what's you know what's funny, and and and, and probably um, your brother's going to be listening to this episode. I'm sure for sure um, that we didn't have Caleb here first. Yeah, that is that is not a good thing, That's, Caleb. I'm sorry, um, and and I have you on, I have you on the, the the list of people that I wanted to bring in, but um, he's going to come in. We're going to get Caleb on the show, but Patrick Michelson is here, and he is the brother of Caleb Michelson. I'm the older brother, so that makes you, sense. You are the older brother, makes so there you go. Sense. You're you're, yeah. you're first. You, you got to be first. Bro. You get a pass on that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, Caleb, me and Caleb uh, have been working together in, in the creative field for years. Mm -hmm. Worked on a, a bunch of uh, crappy movies uh, that you can see out I, there. I, I, I remember each of them. <laughs> Dude. Crappy is in the eye of the beholder. You should, you should read the IMDb reviews of I these have. films. Oh my God! Oh, I you have, have. I have an IMDb account. Oh, fresh uh, no, flesh I, wounds. I got, a, I got a credit on uh, as an EP on one. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Forget which one it was. It was one of those. Bruh. Yeah. Flesh wounds with Kevin Sorbo. Oh yeah. They murdered us in oh, in in the uh, in the reviews. It's just it's amazing. Do me a fa do do yourself a favor. Go look up flesh wounds yeah. on uh, IMDb and listen. You know, just read read those reviews. I, it's I, I, Incredible! I, I have expectations that they'll be fantastic. Oh yeah, it was it was <laughs> it's Absolutely. really really funny. Were you on the one where they did the? Um, it was the World War II mock up. Uh, what was it called? Warbirds. Warbirds. No, but my wife was. I was an EP on Warbirds. Oh, did you do Warbirds? I did Warbirds. That's funny. That yeah. was my that was my wife's first first movie. She won't let me watch it. I'm gonna watch it though. There, there's reasons. <laughs> that uh, that that was on the. Uh, the the science yeah sci-fi sci channel. Sci channel does yeah. sci-fi channel still exist i don't know if they kept up with movies like warbirds maybe not. sharknado yeah you know Shark I, Week was awesome. I i know i i i always i always bring this uh this idea and concept up because i want to i want to make this movie mm -hmm. happen it's called zombie dactyl quake yeah. and it's a uh basically in like lafayette area this guy is fracking and there's a scientist that's like don't frack here. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's some stuff that we don't know we don't about. Want, yeah. Well, they do it anyway. Yeah. And there's a pterodactyl that's in there, um, preserved. Yeah. But the fracking causes the gases to get to the pterodactyl and it becomes alive. Right. So, it, so it wreaks havoc on like Lafayette and it befriends like a six year old girl. But everybody else dies. But it. But but it's. But it's a, a friend. It's like Cliff. Uh, Cl Cliff the uh, the red dog. The red it, dog. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's yeah. so it's kind of like right. that. But anyway, okay. it's just a bizarre story. Yeah. Zombie dactyl quake. I mean, everything starts somewhere. And here's the thing I learned about some of those movies. I actually went out to L.A. did the whole like Hollywood deal with a couple of the producers of that movie just right. to kind of figure out what was going on. And people overseas buy some of this stuff. Oh, they, all day. Everything you just talked about. That's a seller. That's a winner in Tokyo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But wait, hey, you know what? So maybe, <laughs> may, maybe, maybe I'll do it. You yeah. know, um, I've talked about it enough. Yeah. So maybe I'll I'll, I'll pull the trigger and get That's it right. done. It, That's right. I mean, the CGI is much better these days. Absolutely. So you can get that done all all day. All day. Yeah. Um, Patrick Michelson, I I just you know kind of took over, but um, so you you're an ex you executive produced a movie. I had no I, I had no I idea. I That's did. awesome. I did. Are you still doing? Are you still involved in film or no? no? That was it. That was the one. Um, that Caleb, uh, as my younger brother, was the creative in the family. Always has been. I've always <coughs> been jealous of his ability to just go do and chase and create. And um, he kind of brought me to that. And I decided that while it was fun and interesting, it was an itch I scratched. And, and I you scratched could. it. You're done. <laughs> done with it. Yeah. Done. Yeah, that was it. One. I'll tell you, it's 
film, you better love it. Yep. Yep. Or to just don't get involved. Because, like, that's the thing. It's, it's such a crapshoot yep. as to, like, what will hit, what it, what won't hit, you know. And that's something that we talk about in marketing all the time. We right. talk about marketing here. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, it's the consistency over time sure. that makes the difference. Sure. It isn't It isn't like, okay, we're going to do a marketing campaign here and then stop. Right. And then this and then stop. Right. Right. It's you got to keep building. And then you yeah. build and then build, build, build. And yeah. then that brand recognition, that sustains yeah. right and that's how you really exponentially grow a business right and guys grind for years and years and years and years and years before they ever that's what i learned too yeah Some might grind for 25 years before they actually get that one opportunity and then it pops right yeah. and then it becomes easier and easier after that yeah right like what what did they say warren buffett took him you know forever to like make a billion and then with when he hit a billion like what six months or a year later oh, it was yeah. like yeah. You know, snowball effect five, six, seven billion, you yeah. know, and at that point. So, and I, I'll tell you, we've experienced that with our company as well, like just Ladoo Entertainment, yeah, in terms of like creating our own content. And mm -hmm. I always thought, I always thought that that was a disconnect with most marketing companies. And it wasn't until my mentor pointed it out where he's like, Armando, you're not marketing your business, mm -hmm. right? Like, how can you sell? and try to tell other people that they need to market their business mm -hmm. when you're not doing it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that that was always the reason why we weren't able to close as many deals, but now, you know, since creating and marketing our own business and, and being sort of walking the talk, like now people understand us, sure. the credibility goes up, the brand awareness, all of that yeah. stuff. So, because who knows you better than you? That's true. Yeah. We're the best salesperson. That's right. So do. talk to me about, so you do mortgage lending. I do. Um, and that's just in the Baton Rouge area or just Louisiana or no, actually I, um, have been able to branch out. I've been in it for about 20 years now, which is hard to say. Uh, but, uh, I started in, uh, 2003 in Baton Rouge and I've grown into Mississippi, Tennessee, um, uh, Alabama, um, and, and Louisiana. So it's been a good little regional thing. I've formed relationships. I've been involved with the NBA a lot in DC and whatnot. Uh, and through that formed relationships across the state lines, across around the country. It's a, it's a very small industry. You know, it's a, it's, it's a big industry, but it's a small industry. And so, um, it's been fantastic. It is, it's allowed me to, my scenery to change for me to go see other places, learn other markets, which that's always good for me. I'm, I'm not a homebody where I can just sit in one place and do the same thing every day. That would drive me crazy. So, right. uh, I've loved the, uh, the opportunities that's afforded me to get out, go see and learn, which has been fantastic. You, so you say you work with the NBA, NBA, Mortgage Bankers Association. Oh, I thought you said the NBA. I was part like, of okay. this. No, no, no. I'm just saying, I, I thought maybe right. you were like, you know, you had an in with the NBA in oh, terms of no. like uh, no. lending money to, you know, to, to athletes and stuff. No, most of those guys don't need a loan, you know. True. Yeah. Well, don't, but they, they would though, right? Like, I mean, they're, they're not Some just. Some of them would. Yeah. Um, they're not just buying out, how, buying houses outright. Or, I have or are been, in, uh, now NFL players, I've been involved with. <clears throat> Uh, 20, 25 over the years, uh, they do get loans and they buy homes and uh, have had a good little deal that's always clicked with them just through some connections through earlier athletics. That's always been fun to do, you know. Uh, you don't always get them, though. You get their people. Right. 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 You don't get them. You know? Yeah. They're, they're busting heads. You know? They got they yeah. got people. They, they got, got people. people. You have people now. I suppose, but you can still get me. You right. Know? Right. Yeah, I got people as well. Yeah. But you can also get me. You can always get me, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, so... So you're a marketing, you, you, you believe in marketing. I do. How long you been marketing? That's evolved over the years. Um, you know, the way that our industry markets uh, has changed. I guess I've been doing it my whole career. The way I've been doing it has changed drastically, obviously. Uh, as, you know, we saw print marketing go away and paper and magazines, that used to be the thing. And, you know, obviously it started migrating to uh, online. And then obviously with the growth of social and, you know, um, that... Uh, you know, impressions and clicks and everything else like that. You know, if you're not uh, if you're not changing, you're dying a lot of times. So you got to grow with it and evolve. And so I've, uh, despite some of my reservations, um, it's not my favorite thing to do. I can tell you that. I mean, I don't love it, but I'm forcing myself to get better at it. You don't like it? Um, is it my natural to get up in the morning and go put a camera on myself? No, no. Uh, is it necessary sometimes? Does my assistant, Laura Stubblefield, scream at me all the time that I am terrible at a lot of things and force me to do posts? Yes, that happens, and I do it. 
because it's necessary. You got to do disciplines that you don't necessarily love. I'd rather go grind and my, my, my love is growing teams and recruiting and, 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 and building and growing and, and working in the actual world of it. But that part you can't ignore. It's very necessary. What is the content that you put out? Myself, uh, it's, it's not as much me as it is uh, our company uh, or our group, uh, the Southern States Group, which is our little conglomerate. Um, we push out, um, you know, uh, posts that are educational. I think education is bigger than every, anything right now, especially in a time where people um, are, you know, going through a little bit of their first um, kind of pullback in the financial markets. They, they want to know, you know, what, what are the consequences or what are the benefits of these future decisions? So I think that if you can figure out how to, you know, not nerd someone to death, but at the same time um, provide good information for your clients, uh, realtors, builders, uh, prospective people that are buying houses, millennials are coming off the sidelines in droves uh, to buy homes. You know, and so they want to know. And, and we, you know, and, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm always the first to tell my people that, you know, while online and your social presence is fantastic, at the same time, even the millennials who want to do everything with their thumbs, at the same time, they still want to know the voice that they're talking to. They're not, you're not going to get a mortgage just with your thumbs. Rocket's great, and that's, that's fantastic. But at the end of the day, most people want to understand at some point. And so if you're so busy out, growing the brand that you don't have time for actual interaction, that can be a fault too. So find where that marries up. And um, I think that uh, we've, we've done a good job at being able to provide kind of that, you know, old school relationship with that, you know, ability to reach out and touch people in, in, in larger groups through the internet. <laughs> what do you think, like has the, has the real estate market leveled off yet? It's an interesting question. It's a great question. Um, so the real estate market um, has a ton of pent-up demand. You've got so much that I could go into. Is it leveled off house price-wise? Yes. Are we going to see a major reversal in it? No. Um, for a while, uh, in late 2022 uh, or, or, or mid-2022, you had a just uh, accelerating market. It was kind of out of control. I mean, you were seeing offers all the time where, you know, the same house was getting 12 offers in one weekend. And oh, yeah. It was a, you know, no ceiling acceleratory clause and someone's paying 100 grand over list. And that was all great until rates started going up. Right. But then when rates started going up, all of a sudden, I think people just finally hit a point where they were like, you know what? Whoa. That's, 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 you know, the house isn't going to appraise for what I'm going to pay for it. You know, the rate is 2% higher than it was when I first started contemplating this. And now I just don't even really love it, you know, so I'm just going to stay where I am. And, and, and people that were in homes that had bought, you know, five, six, seven, eight years earlier were like, hey, look, I've got a, you know, a 4% rate where I am. I can't really afford to go punt on that, pay, you know, another 300000 up from where I am right now for 6.5%. I just, so that, that, that slammed the brakes on it a little bit. Now, is the demand to buy still there? Absolutely. Um, are we going to see a healthy real estate market in the spring and summer? We are because it's pulled back. Rates are starting to come back down. I think the Fed feels like inflation is starting to curb a little bit. Like, you know, there's pain out there, uh, which is what they want. Unfortunately, that's what happens, you know, pain and, you know, uh, unemployment goes up and, 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 and that, that stinks. But, you know, it is what it is because money was out of control. 40% of the U.S. currency that is in play right now was printed or put in in the last 24 months. That what? Good. That ain't good. That means there was too much money. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really hip on, on, on investing in all of that, but that right. doesn't sound right. That ain't right. No, it doesn't. It shouldn't. There's no way. Because in 08, 09, you know, uh, I don't know how old you are. But yeah. yeah. Was, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, you, Caleb, you know. Um, when... The bailouts happened. We bailed out companies. We bailed out banks. We bailed out, you know, lenders or, 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 or you know, build, whatever. We bailed. But this time, and, and right or wrong, you know, I'm not saying which, which, which that was, but this time we sent that money directly to the American public and trusted them with it, and they don't always make the best decisions. And so, um, you know, we're watching – debt grow we're watching um uh, the cost of goods and services just got out of control and 
it's unfortunate that the Fed has to slam, but you know, they, 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 it's interesting. They interject that money and then they say, whoa. So it's, it's just the cyclical nature of what we go through in this country. Right. Cause I mean, obviously like when, you know, when COVID hit and they were giving out money, mm -hmm. I was like, well, this, there's going to be a ramification there has to, to this. Be. I mean, there's not, you know, you can't just give out money at the same time you shut down an economy. You can't do that. Right. It just, yeah. I knew it was going to swing back yeah. hard. I mean, didn't everybody know this? Like, I mean, you, you would think that we would learn from history because that's taught us that that's what's going to happen, exactly what you just said. Right. But we don't, and it happens again. And um, you had a, you know, a, a one-off where you did not have an economy even to scale at that point, and you're interjecting trillions of dollars. Right. Where's that money coming from? Right. Right. And who do we owe now as a result? Yeah. Exactly. Do, do so, you know? I mean, I've got ideas, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, I think it was, um, I think the intentions are always there to, hey, people are losing their jobs. People, you know, lenders uh, took forbearance on loans. Hey, you know, let's, let's make sure you don't lose your home because of this pandemic. You know, the, the intentions were good, but like everything else, just it swung too far, took it too far. And so now we're seeing the pendulum come back and, you know, we can never find this. We always take it from here and it always goes hard back in the other direction. Yeah, it really does. It really does, man. <laughs> the yin to the yang. So, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, that's life. There's never, you know, there's never always going to be a, just a good situation. That's right. going to be good for some people. It's going to be bad for some people. That's 100%. It's going to be, it. yep. you know, um, it's like, it's like having, uh, it's like having a kid. It's the most amazing thing ever. Yeah. And it's also I have, teen, I have teenagers, man. Oh, there you go. I've got anything. a three. I got a. I got a three year old. So, right. So yeah, I love. I love her so much. I have. You know, it's the like I said, the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah. And it's also, you know, last night um, I'm giving her a bath and she's melting down. She won't tell me what the problem is. Right. And I'm like, what? 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 Ah! Ah! Yeah. Like, calm down. Breathe. What's the deal? Right. You you didn't put the doll over here the way I like it when you turn. I was like, what so is with, happening? Very familiar with here. That what is this? Yeah. <laughs> What's happening? So, and then what I love is that, and, and I'll say it, that I'm going to look at you and I'll say, hey, you know what? That's going to get better. Okay, that's going to get better. Yeah. But you know what you do? You trade that for a new set of problems. Oh, yeah, it's going to be. Oh, wait dude. till she doesn't want to wear the outfit that she's supposed to wear to school that day. I have an eight year old daughter. Oh, okay. And we're starting to get a little diva ish oh know? yeah and so if uh if, if if her and mama don't agree on the outfit it, it could be i could be the collateral damage like, <laughs> yeah you know, yes. fighting with both of y'all y'all figure this out you know you're not you're not doing this to me oh my god <laughs> oh my god yeah so anyway it's 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 definitely stressful but like i said i, I wouldn't trade it for the world it's no. an amazing thing you it's know it's the best thing that you ever do oh yeah 100 percent um it's it's the reason I work as hard as I do. That's right. You know what's so funny is before I had a kid, and Ethan, you don't know this yet. Um, Ethan, our producer over here, um, young guy, hasn't you know started that part of his life. Don't and, and you know what? Don't funny? be in a hurry. <laughs> don't be in a hurry. No. But there's a lot of people that are actually the, a lot of these youngins. They're like, they don't want to. They they don't want to have kids. They don't want to settle down. You know, and. You know, to each his own. Yeah. That's how I feel about everything in life. I mean. But I mean, it could be cyclical as well, <laughs> right? Like, be. you know, you have, you know, have a lot of that, that time where people are settling down and, yeah. and, and all of that. And then that spurs more, you know, nomadic activity, you know, and then that. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, ma makes people want to settle down, and then right. you know, so it's a, yeah, it's it's, it's a circle well, of life. It's, it's kind of like what we talked about the millennials coming off the sidelines so hard, and why they waited longer to buy a home than most generations before them. Well, they watched their parents go broke in 08, 09. It oh, yeah. scared the hell out of them. Yeah. So yeah, they yeah. said, not, not me. I'm not going to get foreclosed on. I'll rent. And to, until they finally get to the age where they're like, okay, now it's equitable. And so, you know, you're instead of, I bought my first home at 24, I think. I mean, average first time home buyer now is probably in their 30s. Yeah. I, I didn't, I mean, I, I didn't buy my home till three years ago. So there you go. But hey, I mean, it and it depends on lots of other things. But just when you talk to them in general, they watched their parents go through that, and yeah. they said, "Hey, we're not going to be that generation." Yeah, right. Yeah, so, and that's good. I mean, yeah. you know, but it'll 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 swing back. It'll swing back. That's right. It'll go, you know, in circles. It's right. it's so funny how that how that happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, and why? 
I, I don't, if we could just sometimes step back, right, and, mm-hmm. under, and just see it and understand that this is life and this is just human nature. And, human know. nature is everything. Yeah. Man, it's, if you look at anything that's going on in the financial markets of the country or politically, just equate it back to what a human does and you'll understand it all very easily. Very. That's what I've always been. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah, understand I mean, how humans are wired. We're super predictable. Absolutely. Extremely predictable. Absolutely. So it's, you know, it's, it's so funny. What are your thoughts on AI? Scary. Yeah. And beneficial. Um, now, I don't think that, you know, and I heard, I saw, I saw an interesting joke on Twitter the other day about what's going to happen after, you know, said no one's ever really planned for the fact that after humans are gone from the earth, what's going to happen then? You know, that, that was just, it was a joke. It's like, has anybody ever thought about that, that humans on the earth is just a phase? Like the earth's old, right? Maybe we're just a phase and then what's next? So my thoughts on AI are, I see the benefits of it. Um, Obviously, should any of us sit there and just completely pump the idea of replacing ourselves? Probably not. I mean, you know, at the same time, I love the the idea of cost cutting. And I mean, everybody wants to think that. But at the same time, you know, it's uh, you don't get animal farming on yourself and, you know, you know, promote this idea until you're not needed anymore. Right. You know, and then you're so. Uh, I think it's like everything else. I think in used correctly and in moderation now. I'd love to say that humans do that, but we don't always do that either. So um, I think it has a place. Uh, I don't think it can completely, you know, I, I, I don't think that it is. Uh, I, think, I don't think we're ready for robots working at restaurants just yet. Mm, no, not yet. Still like to get to know my waiter. You know? Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's, yeah, for sure. It, it, it'll be interesting to see how this just revolutionizes everything, yeah. you know? And then I'm also, I also think about like, you know, what was a hundred years ago like? Oh yeah. You know, and how, I mean, hundred years ago, that's, that was 1920, 1920, 1923. I mean, that's, think about you that. know, the, the, we just finished world war one. The ph- photography was out, mm-hmm. you know, uh, video was out. So when you think about that, just think about what had taken place the seven years before that, the first world war. Right. Which was the most horrific war that this earth's ever seen. And world War Two was bad; it gets more pub. But World War One, part of that was because was of World War One worse than World War Two? Oh my God! The way it was fought, the, the trenches. Yes, that. Yes. Oh my God, man! It was. It was absolutely just. There was a million people killed in the first six weeks of that war. Really? Partly because of what you're talking about. You have all these veteran armies that are 1800s, circa riding out there on their horses, the French are riding out there on their horses with red coats on, and the Germans are cocking machine guns. Like, and the French want to do a frontal march and charge. doesn't work against a machine gun. And so the tactics were brutal because of the weaponization, the, the revolution and the, and the modernization of weapons against 1,800 battle tactics, and it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. At least in the Second World War, we had an idea of what the other side had. Right, and it was just an arms race. But this was a this was a a horseback to machine gun type of fight at first, and it was it was, and, and the generals didn't understand it. They had to get a bunch of people killed to understand what the problem was, and it was it was terrible. So that's crazy. Yeah, that's like, I hadn't really I hadn't really thought about that. You you're a history guy, history buff. I like history. I do. Oh. I think it explains so much in our lives. I, I need to get I, I I do love um I watched this documentary on like the the history of the 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 samurai in yeah. Japan yeah and like how how that whole thing came, came about. about yeah that was that's extremely interesting yeah. I should I should read some more uh, history books all the books that I've been reading lately are just like business marketing sure I mean a lot of times though history will give um give insight insight on yeah. why things you know what in history allows the the business to take place how the our especially our country from you know the way that the free market economy grew like what in history took place to allow that because this just hadn't been available in mankind across the world all throughout generations the way that we're able to grow and build and do things that's, yeah that's this is a first are you um is there a specific era in history that you like to read about um always been fascinated with the f- 
Second World War. Obviously, mm-hmm. I had two grandfathers that participated. Um, so um, that always was fascinating to me. Um, but there's a there's a podcast that Dan Carlin does called Hardcore History, and he does a thing called Countdown to Armageddon, and it's about 18 hours on what took place for the First World War to happen, and it is fantastic. He puts you there in the battle. It's it's so worth it. You'll you'll drive around trying to not get to your destination. What's it called? Hardcore History by Dan Carlin. Hardcore History. I'm gonna the, uh, check it out. Yeah, man. The uh, the episode on what is called Countdown to Armageddon. And what took place for that assassination in Sarajevo that caused all of the dominoes to fall to start a world war and millions of lives, you know, it's, uh, it, it is, it is an interesting, interesting era, but you know, I like to look at things more globally and historically because a lot of people that just learn American history, like that's so short. Yeah. You know, so short, like go back. Go look over in Europe. Go figure out why this happened, you know? And when you kind of give yourself more of a global mindset in that way, uh, it just, I think, makes you appreciate a lot of what we do every day more. Yeah. My mindset, anyway. Um, You like to travel? Love to travel. You've been to Europe? Uh, I have. What's your favorite place to, um, not not just Europe, but... In, in general, where's, where's your favorite place to, to travel to? So my, now can I tell you what, what my bucket list is? Sure. Is to do the Band of Brothers tour, which is, I don't know if you ever saw the miniseries on HBO. I did, with uh, Ross from Friends. Correct, yeah, Ross yeah, yeah. from Friends, yeah, and everybody hated him on that one. But yeah, uh, yeah um, uh, Captain Sobel was his name, he yeah. was a jerk on that. But uh, t- uh, it is a tour that takes you from where they trained in Georgia up to New York, where they stationed, you go across the pond, you land in London, you go from England, where they staged, into Normandy, where the invasion took place, and then this is the part I'm really looking forward to. You follow their track all the way to the Wolf's Garden in Germany, and the scenery, you go through Belgium and France, and, 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 and you see the Ardennes Forest, and you go into Germany and go across the Rhine, and it, it is... Absolutely, you know, Europe's stunning. Oh, I mean, man, the scenery, yeah. Austria, man, give me a break, dude. Salzburg, oh my god, right? Yeah, so, um, it's a two week tour, and and you literally follow, but you also get to see Europe. Who puts this tour on the, the band of brothers? Uh, the the whoever is um, in charge of that miniseries, whatever company has it, but really, it is incredible. Like, the idea that you get to go and do and learn and at the same time you're on vacation in Europe. That sounds awesome. It sounds amazing. I can't wait. One day get these the kids out of school first. <laughs> 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 Got to get them out of school. How many kids you have? 3. What's the um you, you believe in life work balance? Oh yeah. I do. Um I think that uh, you've if we're really going to create any kind of legacy, you've got to have it. Otherwise you're just going to spend, you're just going to be another cog in the wheel. That's going to just, you know, be here for, you know, 70 to 80 years and then just be dust again. And you won't really have mattered. You think you matter, but you don't, you know, not to what's really important when you're, when you're laying there and you've got, you know, minutes left, you know, none of this is important. I mean, it is, but it, it isn't, um, you know, who are the people that, We'll talk about you 10 years later. You know, who did you affect? Who did you positively impact? And it doesn't just have to be your family. You know, it could be people in business. It could be uh, clients. It could be, it could be, and hopefully you can mix those two. You can intertwine what you do and your impact you have on people and figure out a way to also earn a living at the same time. Uh, I've kind of always, you know, I don't want to ever do anything I hate because of that. Uh, but yeah, uh, working all the time that the, the story's written on that, man. I mean, that's just, there's no, there's no win there. I mean, uh, I think the pandemic maybe even, uh, you know, squashed out the last dying embers of that, you know, uh, right. that, that finally, you know, we kind of step, I mean, Europe's always kind of looked at us like y'all are crazy. You know, what, what, what you get? we're going on holiday. We'll see you in two, you know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. but, uh, you know, I think that the whole 50s, 60s mindset of uh, that generation, of course, that generation was a lot broker than we ever were, too. Mm-hmm. You know, they're coming back off of a war. You know, they're just so glad to be alive. They just want to have babies and go to work and live comfortably and never have to go do that crap again. 
that they just did, right? So uh, I think they didn't have the securities that maybe we have now to know that it's going to be okay if I don't close the next deal, if I don't make the next, if I don't work, you know. But at the same time, I think that uh, we've now watched, you know, the, the, the grind of the corporate world, uh, you know, it just chews you up and spits you out. And you either let it do it or you learn how to play the game and, you know, grow another side of your life at the same time. So what does a typical day look like for you? All right, so I'm an early riser. I love the morning uh, to the point that it irritates people. Uh, right, so uh, up at around 4.30, 5. Um, I'd like to tell you that I, I used to work out five days a week. Uh, pandemic also hit that. Um, so sometimes I get up and it's cold outside and I go, you know what? I'm going to just read. <laughs> so uh, I try not to look at my phone, first of all. I don't look at my phone first thing in the morning because I just don't want any kind of outside influence. I That's just, good. Yeah, yeah. I just don't cloud your brain first thing. It's got the rest of the day to be clouded. It'll end with you having looked at your phone, so give it a minute to have not looked at your phone. Um, I get up and uh, like to exercise uh, and then get in the office. I love to see the kids when they're getting ready for school. You know, it's kind of hectic nowadays uh, in, in my world. Uh, you know, you've got a 16 year old, a 14 year old and an eight year old and everybody's got something different going on. Right. You know, so kind of get your, your assignments for the day to understand who's got to be picked up from what practice, where, when, and how, and one, two, three, ready, break. And I go to work and they go do their thing. And then, you know, um, we pass each other, in the in the street so we try to have a, a point and, I, and i've gotten this this way with with my kids of i'm gonna put eyeballs on you once a week like all in the same room like you, you know the 16 and 14 like, no phones put them up put them up we're gonna put eyeballs on each other and we're gonna talk and you know they're at the point where i'm the least cool guy ever ever right yeah totally ever. yeah totally not cool right <laughs> and uh i tell them that i don't you know i can't <coughs> explain to you why this is happening but it's because I said so, and I know you, you go back to being cool and snapping here in a few, but you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna talk to me about some stuff that, you know, that you think is boring right now. So, and one day you'll understand. It won't be this day. I get that. But, you know, you'll get it one day. Yeah, you'll be better off for it, and then you'll go irritate your kids one day, too. It's a cycle of life, man. You know, it's the way it goes. It's the way it goes. My dad did the same thing to me, you know. Yeah. So. For yeah. sure. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome, man. Yeah. Um. So mortgage lending, what else do you do? Um, real estate investment. I've always enjoyed it. Um, I've uh, had the opportunity to do a little bit of developing, uh, do some rental property ownership, um, help finance some real estate uh, for some others. Uh, it's always interested me. It's, um, I had a grandfather that was uh, a realtor uh, and developer in Baton Rouge from, you know, the late 40s when he came back from the war on. And um, I grew up kind of watching that and thinking, ah, I just I want to do something like that one day. I don't know exactly my niche, but that's, you know, that's interesting to me. So I like real estate. I like I like markets. I like um, I like trends. I like, you know, do you flip. I have. I have um, not as much anymore. It's more of a hold situation now. But I uh, wasn't afraid to do it back in the day. We, we all had that kind of energy when we were younger, you know. So um, it's more of a hold situation nowadays if you can find the right property. And, you know, because obviously the demand for housing is greater than ever. So, um, you know, flipping is, you know, there's still properties that, that come across your, your desk and deals. But, you know, cost of materials ain't what it used to be. Uh, cost of building, labor, everything's, you know, kind of gone up. So uh, a lot of times it's a uh, buy, put a little work into it and hold. So, uh, what are you reading these days? What am I reading these days? Um, I just read a really, this is going to sound, um, beyond nerdy, but I just read a really interesting book on the 1980s, um, savings and loan, building and loan crash. I'm always interested in financial catastrophes and what causes them. Like the stock market crash of, 29 the um the the recession in the 80s the like what like you and you because i like taking them and pulling them back and going all right what was similar what are the cycles is there a way to ever break these cycles in the way it ties to you know the political nature of what's going on and the and uh and the 
you know, what, what the domestic and the foreign pressures are. But, you know, I do like to kind of say and figure out what, what's happened, why did it happen, is there a way to prevent it in the future? And um, like you said, you throw humans in there and it's kind of hard to prevent it. It's just being honest, you know. Yeah. We're always evolving, we're, we're learning, we're growing, but we also forget very quickly. Oh, yeah. So how do we, how do we protect ourselves? From these crashes? It's hard. It's hard. With the way that we're set up politically nowadays, it's hard. Um, when we don't necessarily have people representing us that are making decisions that are in tune with their actual constituents on a daily basis, they're a bit disconnected. And I spent some time up in D.C., it's a bit disconnected from what's actually going on. I think people get so involved with legislating and lawmaking, they don't understand how that actually impacts people, you know. Um, I'm a proponent of term limits for that reason. I think that you should run a business, you should go do your time, and you should come back. You mm-hmm. know, I don't think that you should go be a career because once you get up there, then your goal is to stay up there. Right. And you're not always making decisions then based upon all you got to do is get elected. You don't have to necessarily do an experience, you know, go up there and then come back and live with your decisions. Yeah. You know, no, go up there and making decisions. Know that you're going to come back and do business in the environment that you created. Right. What a motivator. <laughs> yes. It's not what happens, you know? No. So I don't think it's avoidable to say, and, and we're so polarized as a nation right now politically. It's, it's, uh, Yes, we're polarized as far as what the media and everybody would have you believe. I don't think that the everyday Americans are as polarized because I don't think they care as much, right. which is also a little, you know, dangerous. But um, but the polarization in D.C. right now is so bad. It's, um, you know, you just don't get a lot done. And then so when one side or the other, and they're not talking, and one side or the other is driving a narrative, it's going to swing that pendulum, man. It's going to swing it back and forth. So that's what you're going to keep seeing. So. The best thing you can do, like my grandfather told me at one point, was to learn how to navigate, keep your head down, and figure out uh, your way through about 80 to 90 years of it. Good advice. Yeah, great advice. Fantastic advice. Really good advice. Pat, look in here and tell them where they can find you. You can find me at uh, southernstatesgroup.com. Um, also, Is that Southern States Group? Southernstatesgroup.com, uh, yeah. Uh, Bank of England Mortgage, BOE Mortgage. Um, also, I'm on the socials on Facebook, uh, not the best, but, uh, I'm out there and then, um, you know, I can be reached at P Michelson at BOE mortgage.com. So if we need money, hit you up, if you need money, hit me up, man. Absolutely. No questions asked, especially you. (laughs) I love it. Yeah, man. Guys, thank you guys so much for watching. That was spaghetti on the wall with Pat Michelson. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, brought to you by Leduc Entertainment for all of your digital marketing needs, uh, videos, distribution. We got you. And uh, we'll see you all on the next time.